Hello everybody, it is Thursday night and we have Friday off because I think it's like Easter holiday. Right now I am procrastinating by working on my YouTube video about me being on call this week and how I've procrastinated all week on my homework. Those of you who watch this video know that I have a final project, a semester long project that is supposed to go through January to April, but I have not really done anything so far. I officially have a week and a half before the semester ends, but I am on call for the rest of the semester. I'm gonna have to go on a huge weekend grind to get this final project done. I posted on my Instagram story, my project is worth 50% and I have not started yet. Will I get an A on this course? I have not started. 70% of you guys said yes, I appreciate you guys. One of those people who said no was my sister, so screw you guys, I'm gonna grind for the rest of the weekend. And I also wanna prove to all those people out there that even if you aren't the perfect scholarly student who takes beautiful notes and reviews everything on the day, you can still do well in the class, even if you procrastinate and leave everything for uh, last week. And uh, speaking of it right now, I'm starting to panic a little bit. So uh, let me finish this video, head to bed, and tomorrow, get started on this project. See you guys tomorrow morning. Oh, morning, everyone. I just woke up. Time to get started on my work. Oh my gosh, it's got paged like seven pages all at the same time and it was like a crazy bad issue and now uh i totally forgot but i'm supposed to grab lunch with um some of my teammates today i'm just gonna leave some of the pages here as pending because we've already done all the actions we just have to wait for it going to oh it's got pinged again going to we're gonna bring some board games head over now before i get any pages my homework so far i'm at like five percent progress so hopefully we can make more progress later tonight I am back. We actually had such a serious situation on call wise and then lunch went for quite a while. So now it is 5 30 PM and I really need to finish the scripting for uh, my final project and really get started on that. All right. Serious focus mode, especially if I want to watch the playoffs tomorrow for basketball. So let's seriously get on top of this right now. My sister, I think, is going to Japan tomorrow with my mom. She finished her final exams on Thursday. And basically right now, she texted me and is asking me to pick her up so that she can go to the airport tomorrow through my place. I live really close to the airport, so that's the basic gist of it. Hello. Uh, do you want me to come pick you up now? You're going to come now? Yeah. Okay, sure. Just let me know when you're here. Okay, I'll be there in like 20 minutes. Okay. All right. Um, sounds good. Bye. Okay, goodbye. All right, whatever, let's just go. Uh, this final project, I'm screwed anyways. Hopefully I can still get an A, but it is what it is. All right. I think this is a good time to go and pick up my sister because I did a decent amount of work. I guess this is not really a break because I'm still driving, but at least it is like giving me time. Oh, shoot. I almost crashed into me. That guy almost crashed into me. It's like a very tight window in this parking lot. All right, because I'm going through all this final project stuff as well as being on call, I feel like this is a perfect time for me to rant a little bit about this whole midlife crisis situation. Someone once told me, number one, if you know what your passion is, that's super valuable. Pursue that at all costs. Makes sense. Number two, if you don't know what your passion is, then what would help you to figure out if you're going in the right direction is if you are doing things that provides you with more flexibility so that you can explore more. 
Now, I feel like in general, for most people, they belong in category number two. I feel like I'm in category number two as well. And one limits test that I always give myself is, are the activities that I'm doing providing me with more flexibility and allowing me to learn more and more? And the answer for the most part, as I've grown in my career, has been yes. Unfortunately, and here's where kind of the midlife crisis comes in, life kind of forces you to make decisions that inherently makes things less flexible. And it's for good reason. For example, for relationships, for family, for those types of things, as soon as you get settled, that is an amazing thing and it can provide a lot of stability for you. But a critical downside to that is you have a lot less flexibility. Think about it. If you have a bunch of kids, it's going to be really difficult for you to move to a different city. If you've already bought a house, if you already have property in a city, it's going to be extremely difficult for you to resettle somewhere else. And not only that, I feel like I don't want to just say that like, oh, some circumstances have caused me to be like less willing to embrace change. I feel like just in general, as you reach sort of your 30s and you get older and older, you become comfortable with the environment around you. And compared to your early 20s, you're way less willing to take risk because you have something to lose. And when you have something to lose, it becomes way riskier because if you get it wrong, then that means you lose a lot of the foundation that you've built up all of these years. And yeah, that's how I feel right now. I've made some decisions. I've kind of figured out and learned more about myself in terms of the things I like, the things I don't like. I definitely do not like going out at all, going out late at night, disrupting my like sort of usual routine in terms of work and things like that. You know, when you're younger, you think like, oh, I can go drinking and do all of these things. And I remember situations where, you know, I was in... I did like an exchange in Cambridge. In one night, I played badminton, went to London on the train, the last train to London, then went to this club, then had no sleep whatsoever, went to Bath and a bunch of these like little towns, and then went back to uh, London to explore a bit more, still no sleep, then took the night train back to Cambridge, and this was the span of Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, where I had no sleep whatsoever, went back to the research lab that I had in exchange for and continued my work there. Now, if I were to do that today, I would honestly be miserable. But since I've already had that experience in sort of my like early 20s, it just for me is something that's a part of me already and something that I recognize is like a very valuable memory and experience. Not necessarily something that I would decide to do today. And purely from the fact like of me getting older, you... Even though I understand a lot of like sort of the reasons why a younger folk would do something, I would not be at this point in my life brave enough to do that particular thing. Because of all that, it also makes me doubt if I understand myself well enough. Like maybe the decisions I'm making is going in a direction that actually doesn't suit me at all, or I'm just not talented enough to execute on the ideas or ambitions that I currently have, which is totally okay. When people just give the blanket advice of pursue your passions, I think the one missing key detail that most people gloss over or don't mention is that that takes huge guts. And I feel like in particular, if you're pursuing something that's against the traditional career grain, it is a huge challenge on not only yourself, your mental spirit, but all of the people around you. If you look at success stories, like, for example, Jimmy O. Yang or like Simu Liu or like, I'm just trying to think, like Steve Jobs, things like that, they are success stories because they are the outlier, not necessarily because it is actually the common situation. I feel like it's really easy for successful people to look with the benefit of hindsight and be like, just do it, just pursue your passion, take that risk. But in actuality, there's def definitely a huge amount of survivorship bias there, and the people who get to write the books are the people who are, who got lucky, made the odds, and were able to go against the grain, challenge sort of some societal pressures on certain things, and pursue their passion that way, and took huge risk, but allowed it to sort of pay off in a really big way. And I don't know, I feel like 
I would be really unwilling to do that. And it scares me to death that I'm already making some decisions that is taking way too much risk that like I would currently be willing to accept at this point in my life. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people say like, oh, I have no regrets in life. And for me, that's just not true. Okay, that's my rant for this video. This midlife crisis is going to continue. Yeah, let's pick up my sister and then get back to studying. Oh my gosh. Dude, that was so horrible. My blanket, I couldn't carry everything down, but I refused to go to trips. So I was like folding things up and doing... Oh my gosh. Not to rush you, but I'm actually like legit screwed. <laughs> you were like, oh my gosh, I'm so tired. But I'm like, don't you have a project to work on? I don't know. Like, I, Are after, you filming? Like, yeah. Oh. After I ate, I was just like really tired. And then like, I'm kind of screwed. And okay, like I didn't tell. Oh, that's the girl I used to be friends with. I'm sorry. And like, I didn't, like I got paged in the morning and it was actually like, I got like 10 pages, like it was actually some serious stuff. So I had to spend like the entire morning dealing with that. So I'm actually more screwed now. So when's it due? It's due next week, but I have two final exams next week. So anyways, have you had a midlife crisis yet? This past, these past two weeks have been the worst weeks of my entire life. And I don't want to like be dramatic, but like genuinely it was, I, I'm, I didn't sleep. I didn't eat and all I was doing was studying and then I was doing interviews in between my finals so I was also like I would do a final and then I would go home after studying at like 12 a.m. I would prep for my interviews until like 2 a.m. and then I would go to sleep wake up and do my interviews at like 10 a.m. and then I would just go straight to the library after like it was so bad okay I don't want to say it's self-inflicted because that would make me very hypocritical but you know well, yeah, definitely part of it's procrastination, part of it's like, but it's just been very stressful nonetheless because I had four finals in three days, which is like just ridiculous. Okay, I'm not, I'm probably not the example that you should follow. The most ahead I've studied for a final exam is maybe like a couple days, like three days or something. You should definitely not do that. Mm -hmm. Yes, because when the final is far away, you have no sense of urgency. What are you supposed to do with that? I don't know, the sooner you learn to not do that, the better. Anyways, so I have to, I have to... I'm stuck with George today because I am leaving tomorrow morning. To Japan? To Japan. Wait, so where, so like, are you, are your mom gonna be on different flights? Well, what I did was I bought us the same flight because Calgary to Japan was actually cheaper than Vancouver to Japan for some reason. Wait, so you're flying to Calgary first? No, I just missed my first leg. You can't to, do that. To Vancouver. No, you can't do that. What do you mean? If you do that, your second flight gets canceled too. I'm pretty sure. Are you serious? Yeah, you need to call. You need to call and figure that out, dude. Are I'm you serious? Pretty sure your second flight gets canceled. Yeah. There's no way. No, actually. So. Oh my god, I'm so screwed. Call the airline today. Wait, I didn't know that they did that. Well, that's stupid. Uh, are you panicking right now or something? Yeah, I am panicking. Okay. Uh, all right, we're just gonna end this right here <laughs> because my sister is panicking. <laughs> All right, there was some panicked silence for the last little while while she tries to figure out her ticket issue. Uh, I couldn't drive her into the garage because we would lose signal and she would have to recall for the agent. So we decided to leave her in the lobby while I bring the car up. And uh, yeah, go from there. Wait, so what happened? Well, I booked a flight from Calgary to Tokyo stopping in Vancouver and I thought I could miss the first leg but I can't okay and I wait so now you're just going from Vancouver Tokyo right mm -hmm. how much I... extra did you have to pay $370 okay that's, honestly that's not that bad that's pretty bad 370 is not too bad um I'm embarrassed Okay, I think the main problem here is maybe today's just not meant to be, but I've literally gotten like nothing done for my final project because of all the pages and all this like other weird shenanigans. So I'm going to try and grind from now till the end of the night. Log off for today. See you guys tomorrow morning.
right back. Oh my goodness, I keep getting paged. And also as the playoffs, I'm watching the playoffs, trying to do my homework. I have my homework set up over there. And then I also have my work laptop over here so that I can deal with the page as well. This is multitasking at its finest. Oh my gosh. I am 48 hours into this thing, Friday, Saturday. It's gonna be Sunday tomorrow. This vlog is already lasting way too long, so I'm just gonna end it off as a part one for the first 48 hours, and then do the part two 48 hours uh, in the next vlog. I am honestly so tired right now, it's only 10.30, and I'm still not even halfway done my final project. This is so, 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 so bad. It is what it is. Mentally reset tomorrow and get back into it. See you guys.